this is the place to be, and the place to be is the Mac Attack Show. If you're having a tough day today, you're in the right space because the Mac Attack is going to take you from negative to positive. Sit back, relax, and let your mind ebb and flow as we travel on our yellow brick journey of fate and faith. I am Clyde Dowdy Jr., a.k.a. Cool Mac, the VPAD for Bowie State University. And I am joined by my lovely co-host, the elegant one, Jackie J. Mac McWilliams, the commissioner of the CIAA. The Mac Attack is an uptown, downtown, crosstown stroll inside and outside of the resilient CIAA. J. Mac, who do we got on the show today? Oh, we got a good lineup, Cool Mac. It's always good to see you. It seems like a week is a long time not seeing you. So good to see you and glad to see everybody in good health and spirits today. Um, we've got two of our amazing coaches in our conference. You know, I love when we have our coaches and student athletes. We got Coach Colville, who's at Virginia Union University and a former graduate of Johnson C. Smith University. So how fitting it is to have our other coach, Ramona Stanton from Johnson C. Smith University, who coaches tennis there. And so I'm, I'm just looking forward to have some conversation and let our crowd know who these two coaches are and the work that they do in this conference and what they do for student athletes and really what they do for themselves and their own families as part of the CIAA. So welcome, welcome, welcome to the both of you. Thank you. Thank, Thank you. you. Thank you. Good to be here. Good. Clyde, why don't you kick us off today? Hey, Coach Coble, you know, I was looking through your bio, and you and I have had a lot of interaction when I come down to Virginia Union and uh, visit Pantherland down there. So um, golf, and also, too, Ramona, is sports that are kind of distant a lot of times for African-Americans, black folks. Me growing up in New York City, I didn't have a lot of availability to a golf course. I didn't have a lot of availability to tennis courts. But your passion, I'm reading through your bio, you had a real passion and you didn't let anyone get in the way of your passion. So tell us a little bit that how that started and how it burned in your soul. Is that to Coach, Coach Coble, Coble, right? Coach or? Coble, yes, that's for okay. Coach Coble. Growing up as a, a kid in North Carolina, a uh, little southern town back during the time of segregation, you know, a little place called Mebbin, where I was born. And I grew up as a caddy, uh, caddying on the golf course and uh, where we couldn't play. And during that time, I fell in love with the game. Uh, and we played on Mondays when caddies could play, but we couldn't play during the week because we had a caddy, shag ball, things of that nature. And I just never gave it up. But as I, I moved to New York at age 14 and I wanted to play high school golf. And my coach told me that I could not play. And he's my homeroom teacher, and I wondered why. And in later years, I found out why. It's because even then, back in the 60s, the places they were having their tournaments, I wouldn't be allowed to play. The private clubs in New Rochelle, New York, Wackerkill, um, Lake Isles, and Clyde, you know where some of those courses are up in Westchester County. Yes, and sir. so I ran track. That's how I got to Johnson C. Smith on a track scholarship. But when I left Smith, I joined IBM Corporation, and that's where deals are made on the golf course, and I grew a brand new passion for the game of golf, and I just stayed with it, never left it, and once it get in your bones, it's, golf is addictive. It's worse than a drug, <laughs> and one thing, I'm, I'm serious, I'm serious. Uh, back in the day, I'm going to tell you, that's all I did, and during my young adult years in IBM, and that through relationships, got me to where I am today. And I never gave up. I won't give up. Coach, hey, Cole, Coach did, Cole. They have, did they have golf at Johnson C. Smith when you attended there? They didn't. Yes, they did. As a matter of fact, I got injured my senior year running. And I came back too soon. I had a little hamstring pull. You know, I was hurt my little self. So <laughs> I tried to come back too soon and couldn't. So guess what I did? I played golf my senior year at Johnson C. Smith. I, I didn't play that well, but I played because I hadn't gotten back into it. But I was able to do that to finish up my scholarship. As a matter of fact, I even got a varsity letter in golf from Johnson C. Smith, as well as we won the 1970 CIAA track scholarship. I mean, track com uh, conference in 1970. So, yeah, uh, yeah, I played golf at Johnson C. Smith. Coach Coble, you talk about that addiction, and I've been around a lot of great athletes 
in my time, football players, basketball players, baseball players. And when they start playing golf, it drives them crazy. <laughs> you know, they can't get enough of it in the course. You hit the ball once, great. And then the next five, you hit them someplace in the, in, off to the left, to the right, and they come back. They're frustrated. It's amazing, man. Yeah. So I am not starting that addiction. I can see addiction, and I can stay away from it. Yeah, I'm with you. You look at, you look at what's going on now. You know, Steph Curry, Julius Sherman, um, George Gervin. Yeah, I played with those guys. And they, even any sport you're playing now, you get a run and get bumped and crashes, you know, with football and all that stuff. What do they come to afterwards? They come oh. to golf. And it drives them crazy because they think <laughs> they look like ball. They think they can control that thing. And you can't control it. No. You got to do it. So, yeah. So remote. Ramona, let's talk about your background in tennis and a little bigger ball, but it's just as difficult to hit half of the time. You know, I used to hit it over the fence all the time, and that didn't count. Only That's baseball. So let's tell a little bit about your background, Ramona, with tennis. I've got a lot of stories about softball. Actually, I started playing basketball and softball first. Tennis came third. But um, I grew up in a family of women. Um, all of us play sports. Um, they introduced me to tennis. Uh, my sisters introduced me to tennis. I am the last of five, and um, mm. I come 12 years after the fourth. So um, I had a lot of moms, let's just say, but they introduced me to tennis. They put a racket in my hand. And I remember one summer um, living in South Carolina with a sister of mine. I was taking a geometry class for the summer just to make sure that I had the core classes in high school. So I was taking a geometry class with her and they sent me to Clemson University to the Orange Crush tennis camp. And from there, I, I just fell in love and I began playing three sports in, in high school. So that's Ooh. how I got started. So both of y'all are tennis. You're a tennis pro and you're a golf pro, right? Yeah. And you yeah. start off in track and you started off in softball and basketball and mm -hmm. picked up a passion in a whole nother sport and now coaching that sport uh, in the CIAA or as part of your career. And Coach Cobble, you retired and came back. So that, that's always interesting to me. Like, what is retirement? <laughs> well, well, you know, when you do something you love, it's not really work. Yeah. You know, yeah. when you enjoy it, it's not work. And people ask me, Cobra, how long are you going to do this? I said, until the guys I recruited graduate. Yeah. I'll be there with them and for them. And that's yeah. why they came to play golf at Virginia Union yeah. as a coach. I'm here for them. So, yeah, it's fun. I enjoy it. And uh -huh. I can beat them. <laughs> hey, hey, coaches, I'm looking at the backgrounds. And Ramona, you got the CIAA trophy behind you. And or Coach Cobra on your wall, you got a CIAA plaque there. <laughs> feels like what it means like to be coaching in the CIAA. Uh, it, it's an awesome feeling. Um, it's always been my passion to coach at an HBCU. Um, being that I went to an HBCU and I graduated from Benedict College um, is just something I've always wanted to enter since leaving. And uh, it's fitting that how many years I'm going to age myself here uh, almost 20 odd years, say 18, um, I finally entered into the ranks of the HBCU. So, um, it's awesome. It's, it's awesome. I've, I've always wanted this job. Well, we're glad to have you. I think, um, you know, even as we have our schools that hire women okay. and women coaches, I think that's been, that means a lot. I know to me as a leader, but also to other women who are hoping that they have the opportunity to do what you're doing, right? And to have the opportunity to be exposed to other women and little girls, right? You sometimes seeing us are the greatest recruiting tool on getting us in, particularly in a sport like tennis and golf. I know we don't have women golf, but we've had women to play on some of our golf teams and still have that exposure. And, you know, Coach Collins, as you were talking earlier, I was just thinking about how you know, how the access and opportunity as Black people we haven't had in non-traditional sports, right? Clyde, we were talking about how basketball, I mean, you go to those sports where it's not going to cost your parents a whole lot 
to get in, you know, so as you continue to coach and, and do the work that you're doing in your communities, you know, what kind of things do you hope to see in bringing more Black women, Black children, you know, people of color, brown and Black, um, into the into the, the game of tennis and in the game of golf? Well, I see Coach Kobo, before you answer that question, he does a lot with the Virginia State Golf Association yeah. with all the programs that he does. So I well, guess those are some of those uh, uh, on the on the ground level programs that build yeah. folks up to be in these programs and looking at the aspirations of being uh, in the golf environment or in the tennis environment when you start talking about the association. So Coach Kobo, tell us a little bit about how you are working with these programs and the youth to do just what Jackie had just mentioned. Well, as a part of the uh, Virginia State Golf Association, um, I was president in uh, 2012-2013, two years uh, term, and uh, I'll throw a little, uh, a little accolade here is, in fact, uh, I was the only and probably the only African-American to head up a state organization in terms of one of the allied golf associations in the United States. And as a part of that, the Hook the Kid on Golf Program, the Richmond First Tee, we work with the youth. Um, you know, minorities, uh, African-American kids, to get them into the game of golf. And I've stayed with that, and that has been my passion. And being here as a coach at the Virginia Union University is something I've never even dreamed of. Mm. The opportunity came to me through a friend of mine. And again, through a relationship with golf, that's how things happen. And I came, met with uh, B.P. Taylor. <laughs> we had our conversation and met with the president and said, okay. And we, we met and Jay Kennedy will go do it. I said, in five years, I'll have you a championship. And it just so happened to be in blessed. The fifth year, we went to see other yeah. But also, I joined the uh, Golf Coaches of America Association. And uh, with all of the social and racial injustice that's going on now, they have instituted a Diversity and Inclusion Committee. They asked me to serve on that committee. And as a part of that committee, they asked me to chair the grassroots part of that committee, which means finding the kids you're talking about, Matt, get those folks in, bringing them up. And I'm working with Arenco County High Schools right now, and they have put golf in all of their schools. Oh. I'm working with NAACP and Henrico County Park and Rex and Brisbane First Team to find kids. As I told today, minority folks to join the board. What if you're going to see your friends, you ain't going to find any of those. So you got to check outside of your comfort zone to yes, find the people that you want to bring on. And so, and I've just, and, and, and of course, I got I to gotta plug my wife here, and she makes me look at Minority golfers. Yeah. And what you what you doing? <laughs> and I've been blessed and fortunate to find some very talented minority golfers. And uh, I will continue to do that as a part of my mission and bring in more African Americans to the game of golf. I love it. So Ramona, you, you know the ITA is a big deal, and uh, they have a lot of programs and things. So what do you do to work with our youth and do the same thing and rise folks up to? get interested in tennis? Well, the ITA is our tennis governing association, so they're nationwide. Um, but we work locally with the Charlotte Tennis Association here in Charlotte. Um, they provide opportunities with the Charlotte Mecklenburg School. They'll provide um, ways that we can uh, teach kids in the after school programs. So we actually worked with some kids in an after school program where they were bused to Johnson C. Smith and we would provide tennis lessons for them for uh, weeks at a time. Um, this particular session was for six weeks. Um, and then through the Charlotte Tennis Association, they'll have organizations to come to them that will want to partner with Johnson C. Smith, the local HBCU. So just recently, um, this past season, 2019, because um, I'm getting, I get off because our season was canceled in 2020, so I get a little off of my date. But just recently, we worked with the local AKA chapter here in Charlotte, and they had um, a group of 18 kids 
that they tutored and they did SA and SAT prep and they wanted to incorporate tennis into their program. So we worked with them in a six week program on Saturdays during the fall where we worked with their 18 kids. And then after we they came off the court, then they would go inside the gymnasium and actually do SAT prep work. Wow. And so there's also a USTA that we partner with and um, they'll provide opportunities as well. And then just locally, just networking with other tennis professionals and building good relationships with other tennis professionals here in Charlotte to to co- collaborate and, and do things together and provide space, court space. We're fortunate to have six tennis courts, very fortunate. So when there's not enough space at one of the private schools or even public schools, we can actually provide space and help out with that. Send the bus over to the conference office and get Jackie and Suzette, <laughs> Ben, and Eddie, <laughs> and get them over there to play some tennis, all right? I was just saying, I, I was saying to my family, like, we need to take up tennis. I used to play, not professionally, but I just loved to play. And I would get mad. I'd throw my racket. Um, you know, I don't like to lose Coach Cole. That's the problem. So I've got to, I know. I just yeah, I don't I, I, I was known as Arthur Smash around the way, so you know, you know. <laughs> oh, I, don't, I, don't let me forget. Don't let me forget the the tiny tie, the tiny tie. Um, I'm fortunate to run the, I mean, that I have out of Johnson C. Smith, which is six courts, and I have it set up as uh, here in North Carolina. So then there's a. Uh, Friendship Missionary Baptist Church down the street off Baby Four Road, and they have a, a tiny tot, ages six to eight years old, that would come to me in the summers on Sundays, and uh, we had a good time with them too. So, I love the name. I love the name Tiny Tots. That's cool. That's cool again. <laughs> I think I yeah. hit it there. <laughs> yeah, I think so too, Jackie. Hey, there goes Jackie. Give me a tiny tack. Come here. <laughs> Swing your racket. Come on. No, no, sorry, but, sorry about that. I've busted a few clubs. Oh, you have, Coach Coble? Oh, yeah. yeah. I used to be a, I used to be a, uh, uh, I used to be a terror. <laughs> <laughs> hit a bad shot. I tossed myself one day. I was playing at a tournament. I hit a bad shot. And I got so angry. I saw my name was, my, my bag was monogram. I took that club right through that name. Oh. <laughs> put the bag club, put the two clubs in the bag and ruined my bag. And yeah. after that, when I got home, I got a good talking to, and I've never done that again. And I, I got a talking to from my wife. I never done that again. You got a pretty good coaching counselor. That's right. So Coach Coble, now how do you teach these young people to keep their composure in a very uh, yeah. a, a game that is very challenging. I have a I have a motto. It's don't let your anger and anxiety get you out of your rhythm. That last shot you hit is done. You can't bring it back. You can't remanufacture it. So what you got to do is focus on that next shot, and that's your most important shot. The other shot is done. And also, I tell them that. You're going to hit some bad shots. But to get over that, you got to have a short memory in golf. Get over it. And then what you do is focus on, well, first of all, when you get on the tee box, you're playing for a birdie. Birdie's out of the way, you're playing for a par. Par's out of the way, you're playing for a bogey. Now, you can recover from a bogey. A double bogey of the big numbers is a hard time to recover from those. So you got to think about golf course management. See, I work on the mind more than anything else. If you can manage yourself on the golf course, you can play any golf course that you ever go to. But it's mind over matter. You really got to control your mental aspect of the game. And I work on the mental aspect. I know the swing and all that good stuff, but I really focus on the mental piece with my golfers. Mm -hmm. Both both of your sports needs a lot of equipment. Um, So how do you go about, Ramona, getting equipment and Coach Coble, and we'll start with Ramona, getting equipment or making sure that they have the right equipment, right shoes uh, to play the game? Well, luckily, our players come already equipped. You you sort of look for that in the recruiting part. Uh, 
You want to make sure they have two, three, four rackets. And if they don't, you know, you can also piggyback and go with the Wilson package. Uh, we have a Wilson package deal with ITA that if someone needs an additional racket or an upgrade, we look to Wilson to provide that racket and look to use their discounts. So um, as far as the shoes, uh, we do have to use ASICs. It's um, good. It's, I've learned to like it, <laughs> let's just say. Uh, <laughs> so uh, we're, we, we love our ASICs, and um, the guys and the girls both, both wear them. So um, everybody has at least two pairs. Under Armour Coach or ASICs? ASICs. Uh, Under Armour doesn't Under make any. Doesn't Under make doesn't make, they, they don't make tennis um, shoes. Actually, Sloan Stevens is an Under Armour representative or ambassador, but I've never <laughs> never worn her shoe before, so um, we'll have to take a look at that. Yeah, yeah. Hey, Coach Cobra, you need a whole lot of sticks to get out there and play, man. So you can't just be playing with one stick, right? Well, <laughs> you aren't supposed to. <laughs> <laughs> I play with my seven on every hit. <laughs> As long as you can get the ball down there for everybody to get in the hole, whatever club it takes, do it. That's right. <laughs> you, you, you should have 14 clubs, but when I do recruiting, I make sure that the folks that are recruiting, first of all, I have a certain caliber of folks I'm looking for based upon what you're doing as a junior golfer in terms of the scores you're shooting. So I look at that, then I look at the equipment that you have, and nine times out of ten, most of my, not most, all of my golfers pretty much come equipped. As, as Ramona said, they come equipped with clubs, shoes, golf balls. Now, when they get here, okay, we get them the Under Armour uh, apparel. We get them the Under Armour golf shoes, which, <clears throat> anyway, we get them the Under Armour golf shoes. <laughs> <laughs> Under Armour golf shoes. And also, I have a deal. Um, a college, I'm through the college program with Ping Titleist. That in fact, if they have to get golf clubs, we get them at a great reduced price, and we get golf balls at a reduced price. And I have them logoed uh, with VU, got the Panthers on the on the ball. Just something again to give the young people that are playing the game a little more pride in what they're doing, where they can see their logo on the golf ball. And they tell me what you know. We play Titleist golf balls, and I've asked them. I said, okay, what number of golf ball you like to play with? They tell me, and I order that number of golf ball for them. So again, it's it's that mental piece. Yeah. yeah, they come with the golf clubs, and you know, nine times out of ten, these kids want to tinker. You know, I need this driver, I need that wedge. I said, no, hit what you got. When you get so good with that club you got, we'll look at getting you another club. Mm -hmm. So, but uh, nine times out of ten, these kids come with uh, personal coaches, coaches back at home. So, and I've talked to a lot of their coaches back at home and I asked them, you know, what do we need to focus on as we move forward? So they come pretty well equipped and we just modify and increase uh, the caliber of uh, equipment that they have. Mm -hmm. yeah. So yes, yeah, it's, expensive, it's expensive, expensive sport. And yeah, you got to have 14 sticks and they ain't cheap. When you're spending 11 to $1,200 for a set of golf clubs, you know, it's a lot of money, but when you get them at a reduced rate for like six hundred dollars, and the kids go crazy with that, and it, they buy it through the school. Yeah. And I, I got one quick story. I was getting a set of clubs for one of my kids that was that were coming, and he was home during the summer, and he wanted to order some clubs. And I didn't know this, but when I called Titleist to get the clubs, they actually went out and looked at my roster to make sure the young man was on the golf team, mm. which is cool. But I didn't know that. He said, well, who is he? I said, the clubs are for Paul Mintz. To make sure you aren't really buying clubs to someone else. Right. Yeah. So it's, it's pretty, it's an, you know, a high integrity through the game of golf. So that means I can't call you for clubs because I ain't on your roster? Just put I'm tiny. <laughs> put, put tiny. Put tiny. Put, are you good? Put, 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 tiny, put tiny Todd on your roster. They know who it is. Thanks. Okay. <laughs> Thank you, Clyde. Ramona, put me on your roster, please. <laughs> okay. <laughs> oh, she's definitely on the. She's definitely on the team. That's, is that Jackie <laughs> Williams? Tiny Todd? We know her. Ain't no problem. 
<laughs> well, let me ask you this because, you know, we, we can talk about all the X and O's and preparing our teams and the mental strategy, I think, I do believe, like golfing, like the whole, any sport is about your mental and your attitude and how you see yourself starting and finishing. Um, but I'm always interested in the mentality of coaches and how they prepare themselves, even in the midst of what we're dealing with and trying to hold up everybody else in your program. You know, Clyde and I have a huge responsibility to try to keep you all up and motivated. And it just keeps going down from my presidents all the way down. But what do you do, you know, in these moments or even when we're not in COVID and trying to keep yourself balanced as well? And I heard earlier, you both show feel your community. Um, but how do you continue to sustain that? And how do you keep your colleagues up? Because I'm sure you've had conversations and some of them are just wondering day to day if they're going to be able to continue to do this. And they may not have the same support as you all have on your campuses. Um, yeah, I play. <laughs> I play. I actually played in a tournament about a month ago. Hadn't played in two years. Hadn't played a competitive match in two years. I got out there. One of our former alumni ran the tournament, um, sponsored the tournament, and I wanted to show my support to him, um, Malcolm Graham. And I played in that tournament. And I was sore. You talking about stretching for the entire week. Um, <laughs> I, I got out there and I, I did my best. So I played. Um, Jackie, you sponsored me in a True North Sports Academy that I had eight wonderful weeks with Celia Slater and a group of coaches. And I, I met premium coaches. It, it was just phenomenal. Those eight weeks that we experienced uh, learning about ourselves and uh, our coaching philosophies. Um, I wrote out my coach's philosophy. I, love uh, I presented the coach's philosophy to the group and I was just, you know, full. I was all in. I was all in that program. So um, that and that has led to me being sponsored with the ITA doing the USTA ITA mentorship uh, program now. So I'm now involved in that with the ITA. So um, and recruiting, recruiting, planning, planning for the future, even though it's uncertain, certain, um, still planning for the future, not seeing it as such a dim spot uh, that we could be seeing it as right now. Um, just just being optimistic about JCSU sports and what is what is ahead. Yeah. Thank you for that. Yeah. You know, it's. As, as Ramona said, I started playing again uh, <laughs> as a result of a uh, season being postponed. And, you know, uh, I hit it pretty good. Um, yeah. <laughs> I'm, I'm carrying a, you know, <clears throat> a 2.1 handicap. And uh, I'm, it, it, you know, it's like riding a bicycle. Mm -hmm. You know, you never really forget how to do it. You get a little rusty, but you can get back into it real quick. And also the recruiting end of it is when I can talk to parents mm -hmm. about their child, I call them a child, coming to play golf for me, representing Virginia Union University, is a motivation for me. And to see them excel. And also, it's about finding ones that started and didn't finish. Mm -hmm. uh, I've had transfer students that have come in to play. I had one young man, Alan Day, who was on the team. I met Alan, and Alan's a local kid here uh, in the Richmond area. He won the city championship age 16, and Alan went to Longwood uh, College at the time, and he made some very, very poor decisions. As a matter of fact, he darn near killed himself in a car center because he'd been drinking. And so he was playing my number one guy at the time in a tournament. And I went to the tournament director, whom I knew very well. I said, who is this guy, man? Beat my guy. He said, that's Alan Day. You don't know Alan? No, I don't. He said, Alan won the city championship at age 16. Mm -hmm. I said, really? I said, what's he doing now? He said, 
Well, he's not in school now. So I went up. I never met a stranger, by the way. I went up, introduced myself to Alan and gave him my card. Alan sent me an email and said, I'd like to continue my collegiate golfing career. Wow. He beats my number one, and I find me a new number one. Yeah. And Alan did everything that I asked of him, and he graduated with a 3.76 GPA. Wow. And now he is in the PGA program at a local country club here in town. So those are the things that keep you going. Those are the things that motivate you. When you can find a diamond in the rough, yeah. and you can make it work for you. Yeah. And I've graduated about 10 guys since I've been here in the program. And I see them, I call them, I talk to them. They still give me grief. But <laughs> it's, it's what it's all about. Yeah. They yeah. And they hey. laugh at me, but I laugh with them. But really, it's um, that's what keeps you going and playing. You know, mm -hmm. I, I beat up on most of them. But then now I got a team that I really have to work real hard to try and beat because these kids can play. <laughs> hey, hey coaches as we we wrap this up uh the question jackie and i always ask our guests you know we've been in COVID since march when we had to shut down and shelter back on home and you know doing our our regular pre-covid times we're all busy we're on the road we're doing all kinds of different things what did you find out about yourself during COVID that you didn't know about yourself or took some time out to do some things that you couldn't do when you are busy doing what you do. We'll start off with you, Ramona. Uh, I haven't thought about that one. Um, I have a four-year-old daughter and uh, she goes to practice with me. She comes to matches with me. Um, we work on her skills and her development. And um, I, I found out that it's okay. It's, it's okay to not be perfect. And um, I jumped right back on the horn with her after, you know, things shut down and, and said, all right, well, you know, we got to get you caught up. You're, you're not in school yet. You can't go in school yet. So really just focusing on family um, while this is going on and, 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 you know, my husband uh, actually got married April the 18th during this whole thing. <laughs> uh, yeah, it was, we had about five or six people there. And uh, yeah, it family has really engulfed a lot of my time um, in addition to the planning and the recruiting and the playing, all that. But uh, I, I found out about myself that um, it's okay not to be perfect and, and have everything um, so lined up. Um, and I found, you know, my daughter, she'll interrupt me in these Zoom meetings and these podcasts, and it's okay. <laughs> it's okay. <laughs> it's now people understand and get it, and it, it just feels um, refreshing, a little refreshing for me. That's yeah. great. Beautiful. Coach, Coach Coble. Well, <clears throat> it is okay to not be okay. Uh, yeah, I I, um, I found out some things about myself that uh, I don't handle well. Um, I'm used to being with the guys. I'm used to being out. I'm, I'm used to as gregarious as I am. I'm kind of like <clears throat> somebody else I know on here that... <laughs> <laughs> that and and what I've just really discovered, um, my daughter is back at home with us for now. And we have, our, matter of fact, my grandson turned 18 months old today. Oh. Uh, Cameron, oh, oh. This kid, back. and I have two other grandkids. Um, my son has two girls. One's seven, one's three. And we had a trunk or treat this weekend in our yard. And I get emotional, but family has sustained me. Yeah. Family yeah. has sustained me. And uh, I get talked to all the time about, <laughs> about sit down, shut up, <laughs> get, 
get off the laptop. Uh, <laughs> so, and plus, as my uh, second job here at Virginia Union in terms of uh, academic support, academic coordinator, uh, that keeps me going as well. But when but, you can, when your faith is strong and yeah. your family is strong, yeah. it sustains you during mm -hmm. this time. And all of the things we're doing now, the decisions we're making. Mm -hmm. Out of abundance of caution and safety, I applaud. Believe me, none of my guys came back to campus, but they were in class. And I applaud them that because I had two international players that were going to try and come back. I said, no, wait until this thing dies down, save the money, and let's look toward January. Because I don't want to get you here, you can't get back home. Right. That was right. a scare. Yeah. But real, uh, it's, it's, it's about finding an inner peace, knowing that uh, this is this is okay, it's going to be okay, and we just got to be as disciplined as this virus is, and mm -hmm. we're not perfect. Well, I, you know, I, I want to thank both of you for your words of wisdom and your support of the CIAA. It's it's been a pleasure having you on the Mac Attack. And you continue to do what you do from an educational perspective, because that's what we're here for, these young men and women. And what yeah. you do teaching on the court and on the on the golf course translates and projects into their regular lives as uh, their social being, their welfare, their educational process. So, J-Mac, as you usually do, close us out in J-Mac fashion. Oh, well, thank you. And Coach Coble and... Coach Stanton, thank you for the same sentiment that Clyde said. I, I think as you were talking, and you almost made me get teary-eyed, Coach Cobo, as you talked about both yeah. of you, what's important. And I think that's why I love this conference so much. I think we make decisions based off of seeing each other as family and how do we protect our family. And they may not be popular decisions by the people on the outside, but we know on the inside what's best for our family. And so faith. You know, that's the other thing. We're praying conference. If you don't believe, that's okay, but we are prayed and covered up um, from top down, and that makes it um, feel even greater to be a part of this, this conference in this community. So I just want to thank you for continuing to be who you are, um, for being the example of leadership um, on the court and off the court, um, and for just being just kind and good people. You know, Coach Coble, we we're talking that about just being kind means it makes a difference to everyone that we get to reach every single day. And we have the opportunity to really make a difference just by being kind. So tomorrow is a big day. So I hope everybody yeah. voted. I hope our student athletes are voting. I hope everyone understands that whatever decision is tomorrow is that it was meant to be whatever the decision is. And we have still a responsibility to maintain our community as best as we can. We always have over 500 years. I keep We keep saying 400, but I think it's been longer than that. Um, <laughs> it's been much longer than that, but we are good in sustaining this conference and we'll continue to do good work. So you all keep continue to do good work, keep yourself up, take care of your families and also the other coaches that you work with. And just yep. know that you are CIAA for life and we're here to support you, encourage you and empower you do this journey together because that's exactly what we do every day of CIAA. So God bless you and thank you so much for joining us. Thank you. Thank you. Thank hey, you Lee, 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 stay out the rough. Keep it in the hole. Ramona, hit it over the net and stay within the lines. <laughs> <laughs> we can do this joint, Greg. You guys take care. Take care. Y'all both take care. God bless.